If you are like me, then you probably have a precious vehicle, in my case a Mokik, which you don't want to get stolen at all costs. So to let me sleep better during the night, I will show you in this project video how to build a shock activated SMS GPS tracking system, which will send you the position of your beloved vehicle when it is moved around without you knowing it. Let's get started. The main component of this build is a ZIM 5320 development board, which possesses quite a lot of useful features, even 3G capability and a GPS mode. To use it though, we firstly need to insert a proper SIM card on the back of the board. And to make our life easier, it is also a good idea to insert the SIM card into an old phone beforehand, in order to remove the SIM lock. Then we can simply hook up the included GSM and GPS antenna and connect the 5V and VMCU pin to the positive terminal of a 5V power source and the ground pin to the negative terminal. During the power up of the board, both LEDs should light up and once the NAT LED starts to blink, you know you did everything correctly. To communicate with it, I connected its STXD pin to pin 10 of an Arduino Uno, the SRXD pin to pin 11 and its ground potential to the ground potential of the Arduino. As a first test, I used the software serial library to turn pin 10 and 11 into serial data pins and simply directed all received data from them to the common serial monitor and vice versa. But before uploading the codes, you might have noticed that I set the baud rate for the SIM 5320 to 4800, even though its standard baud rate is 115200. The reason for that is that I used the Adafruit Phoner library with its example sketch set baud rate beforehand in order to change it. But getting back to topic. After uploading the software serial sketch, we can open the serial monitor, set the baud rate and both new line and carriage return and send over the command AT. If the board replies with OK, everything works fine and we can now use dozens of different AT commands from the 500 pages AT command sets to tell the board what to do. For the GPS location though, we basically just need these two commands one after the other. But keep in mind that the second command can take quite a while to return anything useful. Here I'm censoring the received information for obvious reasons. But the first and most important part of this long line should look something like this. The first number is the latitude and the second the longitude. So by converting those coordinates to a more common degrees format, we can copy them into, for example, Google Maps and thus see the position of the ZIM 5320. Next, we need to send an SMS, which is also easily accomplished by entering two commands of which the second one contains the phone number of the receiver. Then we enter the text of the SMS and ultimately send it, which appears to also work fine. Last but not least, I wanted to utilize the 3G and email capabilities of the board in order to send an email with the GPS coordinates. But no matter what I tried, there always seemed to occur a server error, so I had to scratch that idea. But nevertheless, after converting the command lines for sending an SMS and receiving the GPS data into a standalone sketch by also utilizing a bit of the Adafruit Phono library, it was time to create a shock sensor. For that, I used a piezoelectric transducer. After replacing its thin and fragile wires with something a bit more robust, we can hook it up to an oscilloscope in order to observe that it creates a small AC voltage with peaks of up to 500 millivolts whenever the transducer shakes. And that is basically how we can detect when our vehicle moves around. But the small voltage peaks of 500 millivolts are not microcontroller compatible yet. 
To solve that, I used an MCP602 op amp in a differential amplifier configuration with four resistors to reach a gain of 34 and thus achieve output voltages of around 4 to 5 volts. This output directly connects to the non-inverted input of the other op amp inside the IC to create a comparator to the help of a 50 kilo ohm trimmer on the inverted input. This way we can set the sensitivity level of the system and thus only get a 5V output of the comparator whenever the voltage of the piezoelectric transducer is higher than the voltage of the trimmer, aka voltage divider. The output of the comparator then directly connects to pin 2 of the Arduino and will act as an interrupt to reset a timer variable that would put the Arduino into sleep mode after no occurring shocks for 70 minutes. To also save power, I added a MOSFET with pull-down resistor and gate resistor on pin 13 of the Arduino in order to turn off the SIM5320 board when it does not need to acquire and send the GPS location. The last mandatory component was a low dropout 5V regulator in combination with a key switch to turn the maximum 6.5V of my utilized 6V battery into suitable 5V. And now that the circuit was complete on a breadboard, let's try to summarize the code. After the power up through the key switch, the microcontroller enters sleep mode after a 10 second delay. Once a shock occurs, the microcontroller wakes up resets the timer and since timer 2 was 0 to begin with, it starts with getting the GPS location and sending it. Afterwards both timers count up through the millis function and once timer 2 reaches a time of 30 minutes, it once again gets the GPS location, sends it and resets its own value. This counting up madness then repeats and eventually reaches the sleep modes after 70 minutes. Once I tested the circuit with the codes one last time, I gathered the required components for the circuit and connected them onto a piece of proof board according to my finalized schematic. Only difference to before was that this time I used an Arduino Pro Mini whose status LEDs and voltage regulator I removed to save power. And of course you can find more information to recreate this project as always in the video description. Once the circuit was complete, I drilled a 10mm hole into a suitable project box, secured the circuit inside it and attached the piezoelectric transducer, the GPS and GSM antenna and the key switch to the circuit. After a small battery test, everything still functioned correctly and drew around 3.1mA in sleep mode. This equals a battery runtime of around 60 days with a battery capacity of 4.5 amp hours. The last step was to drill an 18mm hole and secure the key switch inside it as well as the project box along with the transducer through the help of double sided tape inside my vehicle. And with that being done, I will never have to worry about my precious mo kick anymore. I hope you like this project. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Stay creative and I will see you next time.